are you? <laughs> okay, we're just gonna have to go ahead and get this started because I don't think this is gonna change. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's gonna be that kind of day, huh? It's gonna be that kind of day? Okay. <laughs> Hey you, yes you, a Canadian. How do you stay warm in the winter? Is it just your parka? Or do you have some other options available to you? Hello and welcome back to My Tech Wardrobe. My name is Caitlin and it's freaking freezing. I live in Ontario, Canada and it is by far not the coldest part of the country, but on average, it does get down to around minus 30 Celsius in the winter time, which is about, I don't know, Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's freezing. It's very cold every around end of October, November time starts to get absolutely frigid, especially in the evening. So I wanted to make a video from a real live Canadian about how to stay warm in the winter. I've put together four tips today to help you layer for the winter and stay warm while still maintaining some semblance of an outfit. I am someone admittedly that just runs very warm all the time. This is kind of a shacket with my little Freddie Mercury cotton t-shirt underneath and I'm already sweating inside. So I stay pretty hot usually, but I am human and I still get really, really cold in the winter. So these are tips that have worked for me over the years, especially going from work to maybe dinner in the evening or uh, going out with friends when you kind of try to pursue some cute little winter activities. Maybe you go look at some Christmas lights. Maybe you go for a walk with some hot chocolate. You don't always only have to wear a parka. It certainly helps, but here are hopefully some ways that you can just mix it up a little bit, but still stay pretty warm. So wherever you're from, I hope this helps you. If the weather gets nice and, uh, I was gonna say spicy. I guess I mean frosty. <laughs> Tip number one, no surprise, is effective layering. And I see a lot of videos that recommend putting long johns or tights under your pants and layering that way. Well, I admire people who can do that. I certainly can't. <laughs> I don't like the feeling of tights under my pants or leggings under my existing pants. I, I my pants are too tight for that. I wouldn't be able to get my booty in my, my pants if I tried to put something underneath. So I don't often do that, but I do layer quite a bit. The first way I do it is to think about a multi-layer format that is easy to remove layers from when you get to where you're going. So for example, if I'm going to work, I'm not going to put on six layers and keep them all on once I get there. I'm going to think about the places that I'm gonna go for the day and then layer appropriately that way. So what I tend to do is put a compression tank underneath the outfit that I'm wearing. And you saw this in my what to wear during the hot summer <laughs> outfits video, but it's actually conversely very good for fall because this fabric is actually double walled because it's compressive. So there's an added layer of fabric there to keep you warm. So what I'll do is put that under a turtleneck or under a sweater and then layer other things on top. And you can do this with just a regular tank top. You can do this with a regular a sort of sleeveless shirt if it's thin or a compressive version of a tank top. It's pretty simple to do and it's pretty easy once you get to where you're going to take those layers off if needed that are over top. But I personally find this nice and cozy on a very frigid winter's day. So I mentioned I also like to layer turtlenecks. So just because you're wearing a turtleneck, it doesn't mean that has to be the only part of the outfit. When I used to go into the office every day during the winter, I would layer a tank top underneath a turtleneck, but then put a sort of blousy button up top on top of that paired with a pair of jeans or a pair of trousers. And it would look really good. And it would look like 
I intentionally wanted to have all those layers there instead of just wanting to keep myself very, very warm. So I think it's still a really good look. And what you can do as well is if you're thinking about wanting to look really cohesive and put together, you can take a color out of maybe a print in the blousier top and you can match the turtleneck to that. So if you haven't seen my how to wear color video that I posted last week, I'll add a link in the description so you can take a look and learn how to do this effectively. But I found this to be a really easy, simple look, but it keeps you very, very warm. An alternate version of this is to have a really thin turtleneck and then to put a crew neck sweater on top of any kind. So I typically will match the colors in the crew neck again, but you don't have to. And it kind of gives you a bit of an 80s ski bunny vibe, which I kind of like. So if you're looking for a bit more of a casual look, this is the way to go. Another thing to think about when we're thinking about layering is to not forget your dresses and skirts just because it's the winter time. So this look is all about layering as well. It doesn't look like much on the surface, but what I've done is add a tank top underneath the dress. I've added a, a turtleneck on top of that, and then I've layered the dress on top with a pair of wool tights. And I've also added a pair of socks over top of those tights that are hidden by my boots. So what I realistically have is probably three or four layers there, and this dress is a very sturdy, warm material as well. So I think it's very, complicated to think about layering just in the abstract, but when you really just think about the layers you want to keep yourself warm, it becomes very simple. So not only am I keeping my feet warm, but I'm keeping all of me warm. So it is a really great thing to be able to continue to wear your dresses and skirts in the winter time. So I know a lot of people as well really like fleece lined tights, but I think those would kill me. <laughs> I just can't wear anything like that. So if that's you though, by all means, get yourself a pair of fleece lined tights and you probably won't even need the added layer of some ankle socks. So you do you. The next tip is to wear your scarves differently. It seems kind of strange, but hear me out. I have a lot of these big wraparound scarves. The sort of cashmere, pashmina ones that have the little tassels on the end. And typically you would wear them in the normal way. You just wrap it around your neck and off you go. But I have found in the last couple of years that I can actually create an additional layer with a really big scarf. So I have this really nice cashmere blue one. And what I do is actually lay it flat over top of my sweater that I'm wearing. So I will kind of lay it as flat as possible, wrap it around my shoulders, and then layer the coat on top, and then button the coat all the way up and make sure it's pressed against my neck. And this seems like a really straightforward tip. It's sort of one of those things that doesn't really seem like it needs to be mentioned, but I can't emphasize enough how much this actually helps because you are adding another very natural warm fiber on top of your other layers. So instead of just having all the warmth concentrated right here, you can spread it out all along your torso as well. So I found that to be very helpful. And sometimes I even do it with two scarves. Depends on the day, <laughs> but it can work, I promise. And you need a relatively big scarf for this. I'm not talking one of the tinier ones that you just sort of place on top of your jacket. This is a massive scarf. It's probably taller than me and wider than me. And those are the kinds you wanna look at. Another thing to consider is when you're purchasing a winter coat, not necessarily a parka, but different types of coats to keep you warm in the winter, you wanna think about considering going a half size up if possible, because that is going to give you a lot more layering room underneath. So this leather jacket is too big for me. It's too big. It's probably actually maybe a size and a half too big, but I fell in love with it. The orange is beautiful. It's such a natural texture. It's a 1970s leather jacket and I love it, but it really only makes sense in the winter time because I can pair my much thicker turtlenecks and other sweaters underneath. 
And the same goes for this really big wool 80s jacket that my great aunt gave to me um, that she no longer wanted. And I find that when I layer a really big sweater underneath, I actually don't need any additional layers other than that because it is so, so warm. So if you give yourself a little bit of extra room, if possible, if you can find one, then I highly recommend it because that's what I tend to do with my jacket. So rather than being flush to your skin and not being able to add many bulky layers under, you give yourself that little extra wiggle room. And when you're thinking about these jackets, as an aside, think about what kind of natural fabrics you can choose from. So like I said, this is wool, this is genuine leather. Uh, these are pieces that are going to be just naturally warm anyway, because they're already lined and they're a natural fiber. I use this for wool blazers as well. So if you have a bit of a blazer that you really love, but doesn't fit you exactly quite right, add that additional layer of a turtleneck underneath if possible and then you will be surprised how warm you are i filmed this when the weather in the morning there was still frost on the ground i think it was about minus one degree celsius so it was still pretty chilly but i was perfectly warm the entire time in these types of materials so i know that finding these natural materials often isn't easy at a decent price, especially brand new or sustainably made. But these are the pieces that I would really recommend to find vintage or thrifted or secondhand because you're gonna get a lot better of a price on these natural materials and they're actually more abundant in vintage clothing because they were used more often than they are now. So again, try to find a tiny bit bigger of a size than you usually buy and then layer underneath to keep you warm. And all of these coats are very stylish, so I think it still completes the look. Last is to choose the right warm accessories that you can actually have fun with. I know it's very complicated in the winter time to feel fun and stylish because all you wanna do is just bundle up and be very warm, but you can have both. Have your cake, eat it too. Oh, I could really go for some cake. Anyway, all I'm saying here is when you're choosing your winter accessories, have some fun. So I have a plethora of winter hats. We call them toques here. I've called them toques in many videos now, and I'm just now really realizing that some of you who aren't from Canada may not even know what I was talking about, but when I say hat, I'm really talking about toques. In Canadian, <laughs> but they are a really great opportunity for you to just show your personality. So I have some in mustard yellow, I have some in red, I've got some multicolored ones, I have a Angelica from Rugrats one. I will link that down below actually because I think it's still available. I just really like accessorizing with a fun hat in the winter and what better way to keep the old dome warm than a really cute hat. And some of these are actually fleece lined. So when you look at the inside, there's this sort of soft, cozy lining, keeps your head extra warm as well. So something to think about. The same is true for gloves or mitts. I have a really fun pair of vintage leather gloves that I found at a secondhand store near me. I think they're 70s, um, but they were dead stock. So they're brand new, essentially. They've never been worn. They've just sort of sat on a shelf for years. So I wear these a lot in the winter because not only are they good just driving gloves to keep your hands relatively warm, but they really do complete an outfit. I think this sort of camel color looks really, really nice. So something to consider as well. Find yourself a nice pair of leather or vegan leather gloves because if you purchase them in a color that is a really nice accent, they can really complete your outfit and look pretty great and stay warm at the same time. So you'll notice that I haven't talked about boots yet in this video, and actually I'm not really going to because boots are so specific to your feet and your climate. So all I will say is that I can only recommend a pair of boots that is both stylish, comfortable, 
and warm and waterproof. Now I am still personally on the search for the perfect winter boot and I have a lot of work to do to try to find it. I did ask my followers on Instagram what winter brands they preferred for their boots so I will just add some of these here. Pause for brands so you can take a screenshot and go research them later but here they are. <laughs> I really just think it's critical to stay warm in the winter, no matter what. But you don't have to sacrifice feeling stylish and feeling confident and really like you can take on the world for being warm. You can do both, you actually can. It's just all about layering effectively for you. And like I said, I run really warm, so I can't actually go overboard on layering and fuzzy materials because I, um, it just, it does, it's not a good look. <laughs> but if you are someone who really likes the warm and cozy winter outfits, let us know in the comments how you prefer to layer or if there's any particular winter hack that you have found to be very successful for you because I would love to know. Okay, stay warm out there, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it and if you didn't like it, subscribe anyway because it might be different next time. Bye. What was it going to say? I don't know. <laughs> Come back to my tech. Whoa. <laughs> sweating already. Are you worried? Oh boy. She's got the zoomies.